This sweet little baby can't be left alone for 15 minutes. If its body temperature changes too much, it will die. Shits itself. Drinks dead dinosaur juice. Weighs like two tons. Vroom vroom, motherfucker. Hey y'all, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at some political memes. Political memes are like any other piece of art. They bounce back and forth between creating emotional experiences and conveying an idea. But like any other form of art, not all expressions are positive, and the right, namely the alt-right, have intentional campaigns to spread harmful ideas using memes. Leftists and liberals online see these memes, recognize their potential for harm, and often want to find a way to combat their spread. Some other methods efficiently combat the alt-right, but others end up backfiring. In this video, I'll be examining a few examples of how the left has failed to combat alt-right memes in the past, and I'll be dissecting an example of how centrists and the left have successfully dismantled alt-right memes. Part 1. Anatomy of an alt-right meme to understand where the left has failed to combat alt-right memes, we first have to explore their anatomy. To do so, let's jump right to the source. 4chan is a very specific, it's just a joke bro, you're taking things too seriously, kind of rhetoric. You see this comic implying Jews encourage interracial breeding to destroy white culture? It's just a joke bro, lel, you're so triggered. But as you can see from that comic, these are decidedly not just jokes. They carry overt, often dangerous, political messages. Sure, the right's thought leaders will tell you it's all in good fun, and that they're just so much better at taking a joke than you. It's just a joke. Plain and simple. But to approach this from an artist's perspective, a piece of art, no matter how much it tries to just be entertainment, expresses something political. An action movie can never be just a piece of pulpy entertainment. It expresses an opinion on who's good, who's bad, and that violence is the solution. Likewise, an alt-right meme is rarely just a joke. It has a political message to spread, and in the extreme cases, the message can be dangerous. Let's take a look at a few and see what they're up to. First, the NPC meme. NPC memes assert that liberals are brainless, spewing the same lines of dialogue they were programmed to say, presumably programmed by George Soros or whoever their boogeyman is these days. The meme's foundation is in a study that found most people don't process info through internal monologues. The study was merely reflecting on how humans process info in a lot of different ways, but 4chan weaponized the results to justify hierarchies they believe genetically exist, and to say that the folks who don't have an internal monologue write a lower level of cognitive thought. This explains why so many people enjoy casual activities like sports and drinking or sex. That's all their subhuman brains can process. This is proof liberals, women, and Jews, and black people are on autopilot. The only people I've met with inner dialogues are white or Asian, not Chinese, of course. As we can see here, the threads that inspired the NPC meme were ones in which users readily labeled various groups as subhuman. That context is baked into NPC memes. And it doesn't matter how much a right-wing thought leader tells their audience, it's just a joke. The memes are inseparable from this subtext. If the right just wanted to say leftists sound repetitive, a better figure to cast the left as would be a broken record. But of course, that's not the meme's only goal. Again, it's arguing that genetic hierarchies exist. And through a death of the author lens, I can see somebody trying to say, well, I don't use the memes with that intent. But since we can never fully separate author from interpretation, to deny the subtext subtext and history of these memes is hogwash. Lastly, let's talk about a broad genre of memes, what I'll loosely call everyone who disagrees with me is malformed. Here are a few of those memes for your viewing pleasure. Unlike with the previous example, I don't have to dig into the history for you to see that this meme argues genetic hierarchies exist. It doesn't take analysis of subtext to draw that conclusion. It's the text. It's unashamedly the meme's goal. Which is pretty yikes, no matter how you slice it, my dude. So here we have two alt-right memes that try to normalize genetic hierarchies through humor. Other memes of theirs express similar points, but these are the two most codified that I've seen. The normalization of these hierarchies would be a step toward a much shittier society for any group the alt-right mob deems worthy of othering. And sadly, the spread of casual usage of these memes is wide. I found ones like these in threads about anything from music to pop culture. That ain't good, folks. Because if we see those memes all over the place, it's a sign that their harmful message is spreading. To a keen leftist, combating the harmful memes produced by the alt-right is necessary. But the question is, how do we make that happen? Part 2. 
the virgin attempt to dismantle memes. Some will try to point out the harmful rhetoric of the memes, or call the one sharing it a fascist. The alt-right isn't phased by this. They'd probably take it as a badge of honor, a sign of having successfully trolled a lib. Or in the case of an oblivious person who didn't do his research, they're gonna deflect that assertion under the guise that you just can't take a joke. It's just a joke. So all in all, the strategy isn't terribly successful. The other prevailing idea is to demystify touchstones the alt-right holds dear. The producers has done a lot to rip Hitler of posthumous power by deconstructing Nazi imagery. By placing these images and practices into the glamorous and showboaty world of musical theater, Brooks points out how absurd their brand of nationalism was and makes those practices seem so silly, neo-Nazis want nothing to do with them. This strategy appears effective. But in the struggle to combat the alt-right, a lot of leftists don't deconstruct the memes the way Brooks deconstructed Nazi imagery. They just reuse the same memes against the alt-right. And if we acknowledge these memes reinforce genetic hierarchies, that means leftists are accidentally agreeing these hierarchies exist when they share the memes. As we saw earlier, the goal of memes like these is to dehumanize political opponents. They assert that one side is not only correct on a political issue, but that genetic superiority explains why they're correct. To simply reuse one of these memes, with a conservative being the genetically inferior one this time, doesn't subvert the framework, it ends up buying into the idea that there are definable characteristics about a person that make them genetically predisposed to be wrong while you, the big brained and genetically superior person, are predisposed to be right. Some leftists say they only use these memes to try to trigger the alt-right, since clearly the alt-right cares about perceiving itself as genetically superior. While that might upset a couple of alt-right weirdos, I think the more likely and immediately present normalization of genetic hierarchies does more harm to marginalized folks than it saps power from the alt-right. For this reason, I think the tactic is all in all a failure from the left. So we've identified a problem with recycling these memes, but how do we fix it? To me, the left needs to do the legwork to fundamentally change the meme. As it stands right now, there's no attempt to deconstruct the genetic assumptions of the memes, just to change the subject of its hierarchies. Now, I would argue these memes were doomed from the start. I don't know if it's possible to alter the framework of an ableist meme without just making a different meme. But if the left could find an alternative way to sap these memes of their power, what might that do? Well, thankfully, we have a real life example. Part 3, the Chad alt-right triggering meme. There's a sizable overlap between the alt-right and incels. It's like the rectangle and square dynamic. Not every alt-right fella is an incel, but all incels are alt-right. So that means the alt-right is like the square be no, the, the incels are the square because, whatever, you get the idea. For the uninitiated, an incel is a self-identified involuntary celibate. Mostly men who bemoan their inability to get laid, placing the blame on women and feminism. Also sometimes the Jews. Incels obsess over physical appearance, going deep into shit like the structure of the perfect jawline. There's a depressing path to radicalization within the community. Many users claim lying down and rotting is the only solution once you discover your slighted place in society. I could go on, but ContraPoint's already made a perfect video about incels, so if you want a more in-depth look, I'd say go watch her masterpiece. For now, what's important are these points. The community's a dark place, suicidal at its worst, and they blame their problems on women, genetics, and the way that society interacts with both. And when a group of people get together and get fed up, it's inevitable that they'll turn their strife into art. From this community's loathing and depression birthed a meme, I now present to you the Virgin Walk versus the Chad Stride. Back slouched. Hair seems to overreact to wind. Sometimes uses headphones to escape potential conversation or mitigate agoraphobic symptoms. Back so straight you could measure structural foundation with his spinal cord. Head is at a perfect vertical angle at all times. Does not register the emotions or feelings of others at all. Hands always prepared to grab a nearby fertile pussy. God, hate it. Here we see the community's obsession with genetics. Hair that's hard to manage versus the perfectly quaffed hairdo. A slouched back as opposed to a straight spine. The virgin shown to be inferior because of these traits and how they inform the rest of his personality. A slouched back leads to averting eye contact, which lessens social skills and worsens anxiety. It's a vicious cycle, leaving the virgin at the behest of his genetics. Same goes for Chad. His physical traits lead to his refined social skills. Both characters are set up for failure or success not by choice, 
but by genetics. Previewed here is Chad's sexual side, which is the focus of most other memes. Small penis. Gross, misshapen body. Ten pack of abs. Chad Spundercock. Sweat dripping, can't stop fidgeting. Took him months to build up the courage to talk to her. Girl is just being polite, not really paying attention. Will inevitably end up rejected. We'll have a woman in bed within five minutes of meeting her without fail. Makes no attempt to remember her name. Has zero regard for her worth as a person. Throws her out as soon as he finishes. Hollywood consults him for... <laughs> One-liners? These last two memes really get to the root of how incels view the dating economy. The Verge is just so naturally unappealing to this vapid woman that he never stood a chance. And she's vapid because women are conditioned to be like that by society. The lady in this meme is not only ignoring the virgin, she bangs Chad while the virgin's crying outside, adding an extra layer of malice that makes incels feel betrayed. Meanwhile, Chad, with his genetically superior chin, has never been rejected by a woman and is so perfect that there are zero repercussions for his misogyny. And notice how, above all else, these memes are constructed to make you feel sympathy for the virgin. It's not any choice he's making that causes shortcomings. His flaws are predisposed and society is structured such that he just can't get a leg up in the world. Chad just won the genetic lottery and that's why he's able to do all these desirable things like get away with not respecting women. Odd thing to be envious of. When we consider the cult of sadness incels cultivate, we have to recognize that these memes pack a cogent punch for those looking for an answer to their loneliness. Throughout history, fascists recruit by blaming societal ills on specific groups. Normally it's ethnic minorities, but in this case women fill the same role. Several mass shooters have cited ideas from the incel community as driving them to commit murder. With that being the case, sapping these memes of their power is super important. So if you recognize the power this meme can have in stirring up incels, what might you do to combat its spread? If we use the examples from earlier, in which we just take the meme and make fun of incels on their terms, we're stuck. You can't just double down on making fun of incels having weak genes or being born losers. That might actually make things worse by radicalizing some of them further. You need a different approach. Thankfully, the internet rallied around the correct way to approach this meme. First, the genetically slighted nature of incels was skeptically examined. Sure, society prioritizes attractive people and it creates a privileged group, but incels are unwilling to acknowledge how their individual actions lead to their celibacy, namely the fact that they are unbearably misogynistic. It should be no surprise that a community based around blaming women for their problems, calling women lesser than men, and using words like fe femoid got that reputation. Incels more often offer each other tips for how to trick women into sleeping with them than they advocate for personality or life changes that might make someone a more desirable mate. Not to mention, incels are often just as unwilling to date women they deem ugly as they claim attractive women are unwilling to date them. The only thing Denmark is good for is taxes that are very high. And I feel sorry for the men, they pay tax so high for women so ugly. <laughs> It's all in all by folks outside of the alt-right, genetics were seen as secondary to the incel community's refusal to bring about personal change. Secondly, the idolatry around Chad was examined. Though he's absurdly posited as a douche, his traits are all ones incels wish they possessed. They desire to be so attractive that they don't have to regard a woman's well-being. They already don't, but they want to be so hot they can get away with it. They want to skirt by in the dating economy not having to put any effort in. Looking at the real world though, these aren't traits women desire in men. Looking at this joint study from 2019 which surveyed over 64,000 women across the world, kindness and supportiveness were by far the two most desired qualities in men. Which surprisingly doesn't include and in fact directly contradicts the ideal Chad represents to incels. Seeing through all the BS, the script of the Chad and Virgin meme got flipped. To my knowledge, it wasn't an organized effort, but over time, in the memes, the virgin was no longer rejected because women are vapid, he's rejected because he's an asshole. Chad's no longer desirable just because of his cleft chin, it's because he respects women, is adamant about consent, and prioritizes his partner's sexual experience over his own pleasure. No longer is Chad a figure incels wish they could have been born into the mold of, he's an idol possessing learnable character traits that we should all strive for. This spin on the original meme aided in sapping his power by simultaneously deconstructing the idea that incels are at the behest of genetics and altering what traits are desirable in the mythical Chad 
to be, you know, actually decent human traits. The meme also went through parody and, most importantly, goofy wholesome phases. In some of the memes Chad and the Virgin aren't mortal enemies, they're good friends and from time to time help each other out. And eventually, they're dating. Or oh, they make the cutest babies, don't you know? All these fun or silly renditions strip the meme of its serious political influence. The character of the Virgin's no longer a viable option for the incel community to convey their shitty beliefs through, because now he's a joke to most internet goers. This example strikingly reminds me of the producers, in that it forced the alt-right to abandon the imagery that had been humiliated. While incels still exist and still have awful beliefs, this key tool in radicalizing lonely men is no longer at their disposal, and it seems they've taken years to find a new vessel. What happened to the Chad and Virgin meme is a great example of Praxis Online. I witnessed the progression in real time through the Facebook group Legend of Chad, Ocarina of Gains. The group went from sharing memes that largely supported the original idea to becoming a wholesome group where traits like emotional vulnerability are coveted and seen as Chad. I've not found evidence that this was a planned campaign brought about by Antifa or whomever, it was just kind of a natural progression, meaning these harmful ideas aren't sticking so easily with people. But regardless of the progression's intentionality, we can learn from the successful transition of the Chad meme and use its lessons in intentional campaigns to dismantle alt-right memes. And that, folks, is Praxis. Make no mistake, memes are a powerful tool for converting people, and the necessary battle of negating these memes can be a tough tightrope to walk. One can easily fall into the trap of asserting the same hierarchies alt-right communities work night and day to convince people are real. But if we use chat memes as an example, the best way to combat these ideas is to turn the meme into something the alt-right wants no part of. By acknowledging and challenging the hierarchy it establishes, and by parodying the characters to absurd lengths, you rip the alt-right of a potential tool, and you do that not by using the meme on the creator's terms, and not by merely changing the subject of a perceived inferiority, but by a thorough deconstruction of a meme's contents till the flaws of its creator are exposed. It also doesn't hurt to make the characters pretty gay or wholesome, the alt-right can't stand that. That'll be it for this video everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video be sure to toss me one of them likes, be sure to click subscribe and ring the little bell so that you can know the exact nanosecond I post a new video. Also, I want to take a moment here to shout out Jack Saint's video on the NPC meme. Just know that his video on the NPC memes was informative and initially inspired this idea. Thanks much, and I'll see y'all next time.